um, the objective of Meiji finally is to ensure that we become a product nation and we have enough products in all of these spaces, and that includes social media. That includes what big tech is offering. So But will you be announcing who has been selected? That is that we will be doing. Uh, the, the process of um, vetting all the applications has started. As to what are the added features and what are the other uh, elements which need to be brought in to make sure that their products are on par with. globally provided products of a similar nature what can we expect from the government i think uh, that is exactly the problem that we are attempting to solve through the india ai mission any semiconductor jobs uh, how do you assess um, all this and i think google's also expected to announce a significant investment in the next uh, week i think uh, what has been very significant and gratifying in the digital space or the technology space is the way that it is all coming together and converging we have the india mobile congress here which looks at telecom and technology together we've had the global uh, fintech festival happening in mumbai where again finance the finance world interacts with the technology world to see how this is passed on and we are looking at two significant or foundational technologies horizontal technologies which overlay this one is uh, what is happening in the semiconductor space in terms of both designing chips and manufacturing chips and the other is in the space of ai and the way that it rides on all of this data and make sure that uh, it's uh, uh, it can be used more effectively efficiently and productively and i think uh, this is uh, a very significant moment Uh, this is uh, a, a significant and a point of inflection literally in the way that convergence is taking place and at the same time um, india is getting recognized as a crucial player in this entire uh, space both as a, a powerhouse in terms of talent which can uh, truly fuel some of the innovation in the space and also as a place where technology can be consumed for economic and social good i i think that is what uh, these all of these events establish and the significance of india and significance of uh, the indian uh, situation today to both absorb this technology and use it in a way that is good both for the country itself and for the world at large what would you say to people who say that you know this is a playbook adopted by the big techs because today if you look at it the google of india's google the meta of india's meta the x of india is x uh, that you know we have become a user base for global technology majors i think that is you see i mean we are an open economy and um, global technology companies have always operated in india and that is we should also recognize that there's been a significant economic contribution both in terms of um, the research and development the jobs that they've generated and other opportunities that they've created um, the platforms they've created have also provided economic opportunities for people to uh, drive businesses and so on so i think to some extent uh, the value and the importance of that contribution needs to be recognized but at the same time i think we need to be conscious of the fact that some of these technology offerings and some of these uh, platforms and brands and services are something that the country itself should be able to produce as products as you're aware meti has been um, constantly a champion of india becoming a product nation and not necessarily just being a soft software service provider so whether it is in the area of electronics hardware or in the area of um, information technology and software um, the objective of meti finally is to ensure that we become a product nation and we have enough products in all of these spaces and that includes social media that includes what big tech is offering whether in terms of uh, the mm, you know uh, services like uh, uh, email services or office services and many of these and many of our companies which were hitherto making these offerings on a service basis are now pivoting and offering it on a product basis and i think that is an extremely uh, healthy development and um, it is something that uh, is gaining increasing adoption 
uh, you would recall that a year about a little over a year ago uh, the entire nic's email system which was previously run on other applications shifted to a zoho email basis after a, a process of price discovery and tendering we shifted to that and now we have almost entirely shifted into the zoho's uh, base and it is functioning effectively we've been quite happy with the way that has been working and we are trying to see how we can expand those services so to that extent i think this is something this is a push which meti has already supported and this is um, this is an area where uh, we are trying to build indigenous capacity and i think it's a very legitimate uh, aspiration for the country and we would compete uh on um, on level uh, playing field in a level playing field with international uh, offerings of a similar nature and similar offerings are coming up as we speak on uh, uh, messaging services and other Arata services and, all that, yeah. and there are indian companies uh, who are constantly offering services of this nature even this morning in one of the stalls i met uh, a company which offers um, video conferencing services it's a startup out of uh, um, image uh, which is stpi's uh, um, center of excellence in hyderabad so uh, in that sense i think there are a number of indian companies who are making these offerings and these are spaces where we must have a presence and uh, we must have alternatives because ultimately uh, it's a question of choice and uh, i think having choice is very important in the technology space and there should be indian options which are available which we can choose from and that is something meti will strongly support In fact I was just coming to that we've seen a conscious support coming in for uh, Zoho from various ministers um, with the uh, home minister Amit Shah being the latest um, uh, Mr uh, minister Vaishnav used uh, their PPT product recently I think Zoho has also been working on an office suite for various ministries uh, as you know the nodal ministry for IT will we see a wider push for Zoho across various ministries we've already I seen three is, four ministries I, I adopting it I think our wider push will be for Indian products i hmm. think it's not fair to single out a single company saying you're pushing this as i told uh, map you map my india for instance is also gain, gaining traction there are a number of other indian companies hmm. um, as i mentioned to you already zoho was selected through a transparent bidding process and uh, they are offering the back end of uh, nic's email services which is widely used including by all of us and uh, we we are expanding uh, the usage of indian products within our system um it it won't be fair to single out as i said as one company and say we are pushing for those products um we are using that already after a fair process of selection um there are further services that they can offer uh we are in discussions with uh, zoho and with other indian companies as to what are the kind of uh, products that they can offer and what is the kind of support that can be provided to make sure that it becomes more extensive and also um, as to what are the added features and what are the other uh, elements which need to be brought in to make sure that their products are on par with globally provided products of a similar nature what other services can we expect the In government to adopt in the sense that you know they there are specific features of each of these hmm. uh, services which big tech companies offer which may or may not be available in the indian equivalents which need to be developed one key element which is important for them to succeed is a market support is a broader market support in terms of what can be done um, and uh, that is growing and that is growing as a matter of choice and i think that's a healthy trend will the government stay the course when it comes to you know this push for indian products because you know the last time we saw this push was when the face off with china happened and tiktok etc was banned there was a conscious push towards apps like ku which you know later didn't take off so you know as the geopolitics undergoes a change for instance if india's relations with us uh, are on the mend with china are on the mend will we still see this push for indian products I think the important thing is that Indian products let us be clear in the electronic sector I can speak for the electronic sector and no other I think the important thing is that we intend to have globally competitive products so the push for products comes from creating something which is globally competitive I think at no stage should we actually expect anybody in the country to settle for anything which is not the mm. best in class globally right 
can't say okay uh, this is an indian product but it will have features it will not be as good as something globally available but you please settle for it because it's indian i don't think that will be india's case ever and uh, definitely in the technology space because in the technology space being world class being state of the art is very important to gain that competitive advantage and therefore we will support everything which is indian which is of that uh, of that quality and that uh, um, that kind of competitiveness and we will do everything in within our means to ensure that indian products can be of that quality and that competitive right any update you can give us on the dpdp rules so i mean the timelines have shifted uh, well i times. mean in the sense that as i already uh, mentioned even on that day we met the deadline which the minister had set for us which was 28th of september to push it out of meti finally once and for all after all the uh, consideration of all the views that had been given and it is now with uh, in the process of legal vetting and that needs to get completed and you know legal vetting has to be done with care to make sure that all any errors or inadvertent mistakes and so on are taken out so we are at the final lap literally at the final lap right ism 2.0 is i think the next big ambition um, again in any update that you can give us give us a few <laughs> at least a few days to savor <laughs> the success of the ECMS yes, scheme before yes. you sort of push us on to the next. <laughs> But yes, mm, uh, the Prime Minister has already mentioned that ISM 2.0 is in the works. Uh, in September, when he spoke here at Yashobumi uh, during the uh, Semicon uh, event. Uh, so we are working, and uh, we are very seriously on to it. So we will push it and get it done. In fact, talking about the ECMS scheme, I mean, you far exceeded expectations, right? I think proposals worth one lakh twenty thousand crore, vis-a-vis expectation of sixty thousand crore. You're going to have a tough time selecting some I of this. I uh, think one thing that we've made very clear is people who implement fast pick up the money. so it we are earlier it used to be that you know people would get an approval and squat on the space and not implement now we are going to let them all implement and whoever finishes first gets the money so, so first past the because you know i mean it can't be first past whoever has given us the best proposal and you know we approved it and so mm. on so but will you be announcing who has been selected that is, by that we will be month. doing uh, the, the process of um, vetting all the applications has started and we are not going to wait to finish all 249 proposals before we start announcing we will as proposals come in and they are in reasonably complete shape we'll keep pushing them out right um you are also you know you spoke about uh, selecting 12 companies to build foundational models i think one is expected to be ready by the end of the year even when we spoke to the minister i think sarvam is the likely model that will be ready by the end of the year are you happy with the progress so far because the pace at which global innovation is happening at the foundational layer is changing every day there are also yes i mean it is a mm. challenge and uh, this is a challenging space and mm. clearly um especially when it comes to building models talent and various yeah. other factors are important but i think i really compliment uh, the technology people uh, people in our iits and other institutions for coming together so effectively um, and actually in some ways spurning far more lucrative offers to actually do it uh, in the indian context and for the country um truly i think uh, they are the heroes and uh, they are doing a great job uh, we get periodic updates of how that is moving and so far we are quite satisfied and uh, we think we are confident that those targets will be met right last couple of questions sir um in in terms of the whole um, ai push what else uh, can we expect are you worried that india is perhaps a little late in the game there's a lot of emphasis on the application layer i think even cci's recent report said most of the innovation is happening at the application layer but there are still entry barriers when it comes to uh, gpus and being global, globally competitive uh, what can we expect from the government i think uh, that is exactly the problem that we are attempting to solve through the india ai mission um and uh, i think india's opportunity truly lies in the application layer so i would not necessarily say that uh, we are worse off because we are late mm-hmm. in some ways we may actually be better off <laughs> without all the capital guzzling but you know there is also a sense that india needs to do more to bring back 
uh, a lot of technology talent uh, because you know look at it Arvind Srinivas from IIT Madras building perplexity uh, a person fra who studied at Pesit Bangalore is now the global CTO of Anthropic uh, why are we not able to attract this kind of talent or incentivize them to either come back to India stay in India uh, and build world-class AI uh, companies because uh, lack of talent is you know again one see, thing I that's mean, been I, I think this uh, Indian talent going overseas and succeeding there is not a story only in the AI space. It's not just the AI companies which have Indian CEOs. There are Indian CEOs in their 50s and so on who are there in other companies and you know it as well. So um, even a generation or two earlier like my generation, there are a number of people who are overseas. I think some of those require a reversal of trends. Some of those require more people to believe in what India can offer and I think that is changing. And honestly, in terms of a talent coming back or talent staying back in India, we are seeing uh, uh, very real changes. Uh, people across the world are doing us favors, enabling us to retain talent in the country <laughs> or for talent to return. And uh, I'm sure that uh, we will see more Indian talent uh, stay back in India or come back to India. Will the government to make a conscious push? towards this? Yes, we are. We are in the process of making a conscious push. If you look at uh, the kind of uh, programs and schemes being offered under ANRF and so on, we are doing it. Right. On that note, thank you very much, thank sir, you. for talking to us.